Welcome to Prairie Sportsman, I'm Brett Amundsen. We all love to be immersed in nature, seeing wildlife in their natural environments, but sometimes getting up close and personal with those animals can be a challenge. Thankfully, we have dedicated wildlife photographers who spend countless hours in the field, allowing us to look through their lenses into the unpredictable world of wild critters. But I love being out in the fall, just, you know, everyone else is carrying a shotgun and I have a seven pound camera over my shoulder, you know, walking around with, you know, I feel more at home doing that. If you've ever read magazines from Pheasants Forever, Outdoor Life, Field and Stream, Outdoor News, or many other outdoor publications, you've probably seen one of Steve's photographs. I, it's something about, because I love being out in the fall in for hunting and I it just, it's just something that just came natural. And it's actually what kind of got me a start. It was like, those are kind of my, my first pictures that ever got published. And then, but I love sitting out on a blind on a spring morning taking duck pictures. I was always into photography, even when, when I was in high school or junior high, I had my first class years ago. I always wanted my hunting and fishing pictures to look like they were in a magazine. Hitting your target with a camera can be more difficult than with a shotgun. Yes, because it's like if the bird all of a sudden gets up this way, everything is different than it would be if it got up that way. You have a general mindset of minimum shutter speed of what you want, but it's just getting in tune and knowing exactly how to operate your camera under duress. It's, it's as fast as you can uh, turn the buttons and it's, it becomes second nature. It, it's like when you first started doing it, you're always looking at it and which button, and after a while, it just becomes, you know exactly which ones to do. But don't, but don't get me wrong. Many a times, you totally screw up. It's not a, <laughs> and, and you think you did all good, and you look at it, and it's like you just wrecked it. And it may be years before that happens again to where you miss, you know, you had the opportunity. So it's, it's, it can be frustrating. Luck plays a big role in hunting, and it can also play a big role in photography. One of the best ones that I, and I think it's the hardest one I ever got was a, a covey of Huns flushing out of a ditch. And I was fortunate enough to actually see them on the ground and they didn't fly. And we were like right next to them and it's like, this never happens. And so you're, you're all ready for them and they actually got up and everything worked just like it's supposed to. It's like, it, I've, I've never even had an opportunity come close again. You cherish those moments because it doesn't happen often. Steve's love of wild birds isn't just limited to taking their pictures. But it's kind of cool to see birds like this that you, you know. Oh yeah. When I was a kid, we raced homing pigeons. Then I, we raised other kinds of birds. So it's like, I've always raised birds and it's like, I always had an interest. I raised grouse years ago and, it, and I fortunate enough to have the time and energy to do it. So I, so I made a point about four or five years ago to, to get back into raising different types of grouse. It's just something that relaxes me. Some people sit and, sit and watch TV. I sit out in the backyard and watch my grouse and feed them. It just, it's something different. It's a lot of work, you know, sometimes I don't know why I do it, you know, especially in the summer when you're, you know, sleeping five hours a day because you have, you know, a whole basement full of baby chicks to take care of. But it's just, it's something to be said when you can walk out and listen to booming prairie chickens in your backyard. With all those birds right here, it'd be easy to make them all pose for the camera. And while he does take a few photos of them, he just likes having them around. I do take some for photography, but I, I have just as much pleasure in driving 200 miles to go take them on a wild lek as I do in my backyard, but it's just, it's just something that uh, just, it's just fun to do. Steve mainly raises prairie chickens, ruffed grouse, and spruce grouse, but also has some Hungarian partridge and pheasants. Always fascinated by native, native grouse. 
there's just something about native grouse, the browns, the, you know, the, the blacks, the, you know, they don't have to be all flashy like a rooster pheasant, but they're just fascinating to, to watch. And, you know, especially with the prairie chickens, you know, I have, I, I have to say I have quite the, the background in birds in my life. It's all my life. So it's just fascinating to think that how many there were and they're almost gone. Steve started out with 80 prairie chickens, has given some of them to other breeders, and is now down to 40. And he says they'll replicate their natural behaviors while in captivity. Yep, they breed and boom and just just fine. They thrive on the the arguing of the males, and you know some some pens are big enough where there's multiple males, and they just uh, they don't fight. They they quarrel. They they set up shop in their little areas, and they they're just starting to do that now. And then they uh, start arguing. Is it later on? And it's 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 fascinating because they're they're like gentlemen. You know they they this is my spot over here. This is my spot. It's like you don't you don't come by. You know, and, and so they don't they're not like other things that just want to kill each other. They fight and they 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 have like their gentleman's agreement and they'll run back to this area. It's just like in the wild. I mean they they could be right off the lek and they won't display and they'll walk on and that's my spot. One of the biggest challenges of Steve's backyard menagerie is dealing with predation. He's lost numbers from all his populations, including his spruce grouse. I only had um, three of them right now. I had an owl problem. This winter. It's like, unfortunately, I can't keep them. It's the same with the rough grouse. It's like the owls can be brutal. It's like you, you learn a lesson. It's like, even though everything's perfect, it's like you try and be nice to the birds and be able to let them fly, you know, and it's, but they get up to the roof and then bird, you know, the owls are just ruthless. While measures can be taken to mitigate predation, Raising upland birds in general is not easy. And along the way, many people have expressed their doubts to Steve. They're like, you can't raise them. They, 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 you can't, nobody can raise grouse in captivity. You, you know, you can't do it. And pe people have been doing it for a hundred years. It's, you know, it's very much more difficult and, you know, hands-on and it, it will never be on a commercial scale, but it's, you know, but that's the first thing they tell you, you can't do, you can't do that. But I have a friend that, you know, that's, that's all he raises is grouse and, and he has grouse that are been alive for 15 years in captivity and you know they live a long time if they, they're a little different i mean they're a lot like people they're gonna get sick and you just like okay and you know you sometimes you have to nurse them back to health it's like and then they, they're just fine but you know it's the challenge to create your own fenced in flock of feathered friends you need to follow some regulations i'm usda inspected for my facilities every spring so they come and check that out and then i have a state game farm license to, to sell them and usually you know I give a lot of birds away to local people in Minnesota. When Steve raises the prairie chickens, he actually takes the eggs from the birds, hatches them, and raises them himself. He's had so much success with it that researchers in South Texas have inquired about his methods for reintroduction of Atwater prairie chickens. They're the most endangered bird in North America, and uh, so they, they're, they're doing some huge reintroductions of uh, captive birds to get the wild population going. And unfortunately, if it was not for the reintroduction of the captive birds, they'd be extinct now. I've been sharing my um, success in the way I re raise them, help, you know, some of the things I do different than what they do. And that's helped, you know, give them ideas on how to uh, do things a little different. Plus I've learned a lot from what they do. It's been kind of a mutually beneficial thing. Nine times they're hiding underneath their little thing here. They're really tame. Steve's birds are raised for reproduction or educational purposes. None of them end up at game farms or on the kitchen table. No, no. Delicious. No, they are delicious. It's like, no. But after, it's like after you, uh, you get used to them and, you know, when you get chased out of your pen every morning because they come attack your feet, it's like, you know, they, they, they grow on you. My wife was never, never was around birds and it's like, I think I've converted her now. She loves her grouse. There's something about little grouse with a lot of attitude. They think they weigh 200 pounds and they're only a foot tall. You can tell a lot of them, even though they all look like they're the same, you can tell individuals. It's kind of funny. While the native grouse may be Steve's favorite, he has three that aren't that he's just as proud of. A pen that would, that would look like a zoo exhibit where it'd be totally, you know, it's, it's just nice and green. I mean, they just thrive in here. This, these are Cabot's tragopans. These are a very endangered species from China.
these are these are kind of unique pheasants and these uh nest elevated nests most pheasants nest on the ground these actually nest up in the air really it's still they, they start laying eggs about the last week in march cool looking birds but there's i think they estimate the wild population is under 5,000. While many birds have their own unique beauty, there may be none more grand than the wood duck. We're blessed to have the amount of wood ducks that we have here, and, and it's like, you know, many times I'll have up to 50 of them right in the yard, and you can, it never gets old. I don't know, I have taken thousands of wood duck pictures, and it's like, I will continue to take thousands more, but I don't know why, but I just love it. It makes sense then, that they're the subject of his favorite image. It was, it was a, shot I shot right out in my backyard here um, about six or seven years ago and it actually probably started propelling my career a little bit it, and it was a, a Drake wood duck and it was with old gear it wasn't you know it was still night but it was old stuff and I got this perfect reflection of a Drake wood duck on a mirror the water was absolutely like glass and it, and I actually won the Ducks Unlimited photo contest with that. The prettiest picture I've ever taken. That it just, I just love it. I've always just been a wildlife and a bird nut. And you know, it's like, there's just something about uh, being outside and you know, a spring day just, you know, sitting there, you know, with ducks at 10 feet, you know, in your backyard that don't know you're there. And it's always been a love for for wildlife. 